Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Another great episode. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode. So let's kind of break it down bit by bit. Um, obviously, this is our first full episode with Fitz uh, being in the future. Um, he's going by a different name. Um, basically, you know, help get him this like full background as this marauder and stuff like that. But I guess, cause I, I was still wondering about that whole situation, but I guess it's because there are so many different species out there. Cause it's like, even one of the other dudes that was there with him looked very human in comparison. Like everyone's kind of like humanoid esque, but I guess like they're, you know, it's a, it's a galaxy. So you can't really judge what anyone actually is. I mean, to be fair, there's Earth, and then you look at Ga Guardians of the Galaxy. You look at the Nova Court, like, what are they, you know? So, m meaning the fact that they look like humans, but they're not humans. So, I guess I should have kept that in the back of my mind. Because I was like, uh, shouldn't there be something going on? Shouldn't they be like, oh, who are you? It's like, so, now that I think about it in retrospect, it's like, no, that wouldn't be an issue. But I do like the fact of him kind of playing the part and everything like that. And they're like, understanding why Cassius does what he does. How Cassius kind of keeps the place going. And so it's just kind of playing into the role. Like, oh, yeah. By having them kill each other, it's like, oh, he turns it to a game, and Kasaya's actually kind of, like, fits a little bit. He's like, oh, he's like, he almost finds a kindred spirit, almost, in a weird way. And I also love the fact is, like, he really plays into it, because the guy's like, oh, you're not eating a snail. He's like, yeah, I don't eat uh, moist things, you know, especially, I don't converse with people who slurp it down in their, the bit fat mouths that slurp it down or something, and he's smiling, I'm like, ah. I love Fitz, because it also kind of got me thinking, too, I was like, has Fitz done undercover work before, and I'm like, didn't think about it, it's like, oh yeah, he's done undercover work, I mean, sure, this is probably one of the biggest things he could do undercover-wise, because not only is it, are his friends' lives at stake, essentially, the future is at stake, Earth's future in particular is at stake, but his friend's future as well, but all of humanity. You get what I'm trying to say. It's pretty big stakes on the line, so. But probably the most, like, messed up thing was, like, when um, Fitz first talks to Jim, and he's like, okay, I need you to play it cool, Jim, and don't even turn around. The fact that I'm so happy to see it, and he proposes to her, and he's like, I mean, I know I told you to play it cool, but Gemma, and, and he cuts sides, comes over, he's like, wh and he has to play it up, like, why are, why can't your servants actually hear? You expect them to serve us, but they can't actually hear us, so. But it's just like, oh. Dude, that was suck. He was pouring his heart out, and the entire time I had to look away from the TV because I'm like, oh, she can't even hear you. I was like, I thought the situation going in with him being like, okay, I'm gonna be right back, and walks away, and she never knew he was there until much later or something. But it's like knowing that instant, she found. I was like, oh, that's so heartbreaking. I love later on in the episode, there's that line of her being like, oh, marry me. He's like, yes. And he's like, uh, yeah, I did try, you know, to propose to you earlier. But then, like, you had that whole, like, because I sick away your hair. She's like, yeah. He's like, no, no, seriously. Like, you almost, it sounds like you don't believe me. I legitimately did. It's like, he really did. And it's just so heartbreaking. Because it's like, no, I love what you're saying. He's like, no matter what we've been through, we've been at the bottom of the Atlantic, uh, going to a different planet traveling in time the fact of the matter is no more separating we're going to beat this you know curse that they have and i just thought i was like ah once again don't know about me i've mentioned it many many times i'm a sucker for a good love story and theirs is the most like prominent they're literally the only ones out the entire series who haven't kind of gotten screwed over the relationship thing i mean there's a whole colson and may situation we really haven't really there's like one episode that kind of you know they talk a little bit about it but beyond that it hasn't really been a topic of discussion uh a lot so but so right now the only core couple that's still standing across the entire series so far oh no okay let's not forget we got yo-yo and matt too being cute and adorable and everything i love like later on when like yo-yo's helping flint out and then it's just kind of like she did like well they were like uh the team was talking it's like hey you're she's not the only inhuman here and he's like and then Flint's like, oh, him? Pointing to Mac. And she's like, nah, he's just super cool. And Mac smiles like, yeah. Like, ah, oh, I love you too. Um, but that was kind of an interesting thing too in this episode was the fact is that Cassius, normally he waits till they're 18, I guess. I guess in some shape or form, it's like, well, this way they've, uh, in human terms, they've reached adulthood. So it's kind of like, okay, this is when they're at their prime. So it's the best time to get them to turn into humans to be sold off and everything. But now because he's selling Daisy, he figures why not like, like, because a lot of people have gathered because they've heard like, oh, the Destroyer of Worlds is on for sale. Well, we got to check this out for ourselves. So a lot of people have gathered. So he, I guess he's figuring, well, why not make a bang for my buck? You know, it's like gathering some of the few that aren't 18 yet. Because Flint's like, yeah, I'm not supposed to like go through Terra Genesis at least for another two years. Because every and it's something Yo-Yo kind of brings up too. It's like she's so upset because like they all think they're getting a better life from this situation. Which sadly they're not. 
as we can see with Daisy's situation, you just have to fight. Um, and then you're immediately sold off. In Flint's case, you know, in most, you know, people's cases, it's like, well, they're doing this means supporting their family and maybe they can go off and, you know, in his case, he thinks like, oh, well, there's a better life waiting for me. It's like, no, there's not. You're just kind of servitude. You're most likely going to be a weapon for someone, you know, and that's that's no life to kind of live like that. So that's why Yo-Yo did what she did. Because when he came out, the um, I was like, like, the fact is everyone was scared. I was like, oh, no. I was like, I was like. Oh, wait, I was like, no, his ability is probably invisibility or something like that. I was like, I was, cause I was thinking, I was like, yeah, it normally doesn't work like, but then I was like, no, it never works like that. Cause no one's ability immediately kicks in like that. I mean, I guess the argument, well, no, I can't forget Raina's immediately kicked in, but hers like legitimately ended with a transformation. Is she the only one that's ended up like that? No, I think, well, no, she's not. Cause there's others who, you know, we saw in, 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 in humans, there's like people like tried it. But she was like one of the first ones that ever really experienced like that, like having like a physical transformation rather than just getting an ability. Huh. Like I, I just thought about it. I'd completely forgot about that being like a very, a very rare thing, apparently. And so that's another storyline. I think I might have brought it up earlier this season that we still haven't gone back to is the, um, the senator from last season, her brother. He went back into Terra Genesis at the bottom of the water, which... To be fair, he might be the reason behind this whole situation. I think about it. We still have not touched back on that storyline subsequently since he went into the water last season. Never cut back to that storyline. So I don't know if that's something we're going to deal with this season or not. It might not be. It might be connected to this part of the season, or it might end up being something we deal with in the second half of the season. Like I said, I brought up that before. Like I'm curious to see what they do with this because this might be the first season where it's like a full. It might. They might do a full arc thing where it's like both half of the seasons are like that. But we'll just kind of have to wait and see. How, you know, last season, the LMDs, and, like, after that was the whole um, framework situation. Well, the first half was Ghost Rider slash... You, you, get what, you get what I mean. So, I'm curious. I like... Because, like I said, there's no way Daisy's the one that did that. But it's like... Once again, with, especially with the whole time travel thing, but then it goes into the whole thing of, like, well, completing, you know, the whole cycle situation with time travel. So, it does beg the question, like... Daisy probably got blamed for it, but maybe there was someone else. I, I don't know. We're just having to have to wait and like, see, because we still have no idea what like actually caused the destruction of Earth. It was kind of interesting um, discovering what Flint's ability is. Um, seems like, essentially, he kind of reminds me of an Earthbender. I, I, I don't know that actor's name. I've seen, him, I've seen him in stuff before. I can't remember what, though, but I've definitely seen him in stuff. Um... Uh, but it seems like he's kind of like essentially an earthbender. It seems like he can lift up rocks and also like combine them together. Like he can kind of probably, I mean, to be fair, I mean, his ability seems like more like what would be on the same level of what, I mean, I don't know. Like, cause I would, I would figure could his ability be kind of used as a form of terraforming or something like that. Could, but no, it's just, it seems like it's like I said, legitimately just kind of earthbending. Uh, poor grill has kind of got the, uh. Got stuck between a rock and a hard place, literally, in that situation. But also an interesting thing about that, too, is that Yo-Yo took him under her wing. I don't, like, throughout the course of this series, she's never had someone really, like, take under her wing like that. So that was kind of interesting to me. It seems like that's what they might be setting her up for. Because Yo-Yo's kind of always been kind of a solo act. You know, the whole, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Mac situation, at least to our knowledge, is kind of one of the first times Yo-Yo's kind of been, like, you know out there because last season was like the first time we ever got a look into her personal life when she was at that wedding like at her friend's bachelorette party or something like that um last season so but she just kind of seems like she's like, like the lone wolf type so i think this is gonna be a first time seeing her like stretching out beyond the team and just kind of like possibly you know teaching someone else how to control their abilities and stuff like that so because that really took me by surprise her doing that. Like like I said, I thought initially his power was invisibility. It's kind of going back to what I was bringing up earlier before. I went on a huge tangent and everything. But it's like, nope, she grabbed him immediately. So that was... Hmm. I also did appreciate learning that story about how she was like scared of what her abilities could really... What she could really do. Because she was thinking... She's like... Like her... She thought like her cousin was messing with her. It's like, oh, I thought someone slipped me some cocaine or something. And then you have Mac being like, yo, calm down, Escobar. And it's like, ah. Um... What I also appreciate was the fact is that I was wondering what we were doing the whole May situation. It's like, nope, May's still alive. Uh, she just has to fight Ben, which is kind of super unfair because May's a skilled fighter, but she's going up against a telepath. But she's still got to admit, May's May. Let's not forget she was also injured, too. So once again, she's still not at 100%. I think even on her, even on her own, she handled herself pretty well against a telepath. Um, she did land a good blow against him because it's like, don't underestimate me. Even if you have 
telepathy on your side, don't underestimate me. But luckily, uh, Fitz kind of came through in the end, was just kind of like, oh, this is boring. The fact of the matter, why do I care about some archaic has been and say that to May? And you almost see a look on Fa May's face like, wait, what? Like, uh, so. Sadly, the same couldn't be said about Ben because Grills ended up finding out about the others and ended up, ended up getting back to Kasai's. He ends up killing Ben because it's like, well, you can lie to anyone else. It wouldn't be an issue. But the problem is because you lied to me. And so Sonara kills him, which kind of sucks for Sonara because when Kasai's brother shows up and it's like, oh, yeah, not any regular inhuman should fire. I don't care about any inhuman fighting uh, the destroyer of worlds. It should be a creed. That should be the honor. And it's like, yeah, Sonara should go out there. It's like. Wait, what? And the moment that happened, I was like, oh, you're screwed, Sonara. Because not only is, like, Daisy super tough, which I think I always forget that about Daisy. Like, Daisy's super good at fighting. Like, I think it's because I'm so used to thinking about, oh, yeah, she's, like, got, I mean, not only is she very good with her powers. Like, she's Quake. She'll kick anyone's ass. But it's like, let's not forget, she doesn't even need her powers to do that. She's very good at good, skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Because let's not forget, hand-to-hand -hand combat came about way before she got abilities, you know, so she's been trained by, you know, the best, May. Yes, there was the whole ward situation, but it's like, eh, who cares? May's the one that trained her, so there's that. But um, handling her own against Sonara, and it's just almost also like, those spears aren't going to do you any good, because it's like, she tries it at one point, and then, like, Daisy stops it with her powers. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm also surprised, like, Daisy didn't just break those, so I think we'll probably be seeing those more into the future, because they, they didn't, weren't destroyed or anything. I mean, who knows? It depends on, like, what are they made out of, like, whether, like, what kind of material are those spears made out of? It might not be something Daisy could destroy. Because I'm surprised no one actually brought it up, too. It's like, oh, this is supposed to be destroy your world. Why isn't she literally destroying her? So, like, that's when I'm, like, still like, thinking, like, how can it be Daisy? I mean, I could understand the application of her powers being able to do it. But I don't think Daisy's to that point. Like, like I said, it has to be something, like, historically that set her off of this whole situation. So, But I kind of felt bad for Sonara. It's like, you literally just killed Ben. And it's like, because, like, Daisy was worried. She's like, oh, just some poor person I'm going to have to fight and potentially possibly kill like i don't know if we're gonna find a situation around this but it's like as i as i at first i was like oh i feel so bad for you like her opponent is uh i feel bad for sonara because like her opponent is daisy daisy's like already pissed at you too i don't think daisy would have killed her i don't know it might have been a different i mean it was a situation where it's kill or be killed type of situation so it would have been a self-defense but i i don't know like would daisy have killed her given the opportunity i don't know but what's kind of interesting about that, too, because this all goes back to Cassius. Essentially, he's the black sheep of the family. For whatever reason, it seems like he was banished. Like, because I, like I, like, like I said, this whole thing is set up before to be like, he's trying to buy his way out of this circumstance. Well, however, he ended up here. He ended up here. And the only way he can do it is by buying his way out, his freedom out. And it seems in particular, he's amassing a lot of money and stuff like that because he wants to show his father, like, oh, look at me. Look at all I've accomplished. But in actuality, like I said, it's his, because he tries to spin it. It's like, no, my dad left this to me. And then so the other dude, one of the dudes at the park's gone. Well, the fact of the matter is you say that, but your brother is the one that's kind of running the empire. So I was like, you're here in your little corner of space doing what exactly? So like I said, like that's what Kasaias is like. He's... <laughs> He's trying to compensate, trying to rule this little corner and compensate for the fact is that he can't rule Jack Squat, that he's kind of been out in the cold. He kind of makes it seem like it's a misunderstanding the reason why he is where he is right now. I'm also curious, like, I've kind of interpreted the relationship between him and Sonara as kind of like, oh, there's an intimate relationship there. But the fact of the matter is because it's like his brother kept referring to her as a stray. So it's like, what does that mean? Also, that means that because and also that means Kasai is, is kind of like royalty. So maybe it's like when he says stray means she. He has no family, so I guess to the rest of the family, to the rest of the, like, other people not part of the family, you know, to people in the family, it's like, oh, he brought in some random, like, almost like a random pet from the street or something like that. It's kind of what it seems like they look at Sonara as. Um, but for him, it's like, what matters most to him, Sonara? Because even he was kind of, wait, wait, I'm putting her in a battlefield? But it's like, no, 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 you're right. She'd be happy to do it. And even she's like, to the death. Because even she's like, you're putting me up against Quake. World destroyer, and it's a fight to the death. It's like I guess it's like am I, I'm I'm supposed to be important to you, yet you're putting me in there. It's kind of like well, for him, what matters most is his father's approval. So it's like no matter what their circumstances may be, it's like what matters the most is the fact is that um I get my father's attention and love. So there's that. Um, 
What was also interesting too is like when they make their escape at the end of the episode. What what's one of the things that uh, happened to um, Kasai's? Is it seems like he got his like throat or face slit. It looked like it might have been his throat, like uh, Gemma slit his throat, which I'm sure she like felt really good about that. I guess you know, in all honesty, we actually think about it too. It's you know ironic. Um, I guess it's supposed to be like that because you know the fact is he makes it so that his servants can only hear his voice and how you slit his throat. Plus, he's also about, oh, perfection and no scars. And he was touching on Jim's face and stuff like that. But it's like, now he has a huge scar himself. He's not perfect. And, you know, I think there's so much level of irony and um, poetic justice in that sense. Also, it turns out it seems like Enoch is a Cree. Wasn't expecting that because even he's, they're like, who are the dude that created him? was kind of like, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm a Cree. I, I like I've always been. I was like, I was like, oh, is he putting on a disguise? It's like, no, you've always been a Cree. Which the question is, does Fitz know that? Because he made no hint at being a Cree, but it's like, but you're an observer. But I guess that was kind of the whole point. But then it's like, why are you trying to save Earth's future? I guess he's one of the good Cree. I mean, amongst any group, no matter what it is, you have the more radicals who are just kind of like enslave everyone. And you just have people who are just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, he's been on a planet for a long time. So maybe he's grown to become very sympathetic of humans. So hearing about their planet, their destiny. I mean, especially because it makes sense. Because it seemed like the only people who really know about this whole prophecy situation are the Kree. Because no one else has brought it up. I, obviously, everyone in the lighthouse like know the whispers of it. But that's just because they probably heard it from whispers from other Kree. Especially because, remember, Kasaias, like killed everyone that knew about the prophecy and everything. Just because he didn't want anyone challenging him. You know, humans, you know, he wants them docile, essentially, you know. So, that was kind of an interesting thing. That does beg the question, does Fitz know? Because Fitz was asking him to do something. And the fact is, he immediately does that later on. So, it's like, hmm. That's definitely going to be interesting going forward. It also sad too because we walk away from this episode because Tess ended up dying. It's like, holy crap, like, I, I didn't expect her to die like that, you know, it's just, I mean, everyone that ends up helping them is dead, you know, Ben's dead, now hers, like, crap, that sucks. Because now the only person they have left to rely on, I'm sh like, I, I kind of figured he'd become more important to the story is, like, Deacon. Uh, he's still stashed away, but I'm sure they're going to have to, like, rely on his help because, you know, they've got no one else to rely on. And at this point, it's kind of like, it's kind of do or die because Fitz has kind of outed himself. Him and Gemma and Daisy are getting away. I did appreciate that, like, because Sides wasn't stupid because it's like, oh, first, before anything gets started, he puts up that shield. It's like, yeah, I'm not stupid. I know the moment, like, Quake gets an opportunity, she's going to come up here and try and kill us. So, like, eh, let's let's do that for our own protection, so... But I'm also curious to see what that means for him and Sonara going forward because she's super not going to be happy about the fact that, oh, you put me in a pit to die. So all for yourself. I thought this was supposed to be us. But now it's seen, you know, because it's like, well, now she sees its true colors that no matter what, all that comes like at the end of the day, it's not about us anymore. It's about him. So definitely uh, broke, broke some trust there. I am curious. That might mean she might become more sympathetic to S.H.I.E.L.D. going forward. And there was also an interesting line. That Kasaias was saying when uh, uh, May came out, it's like, oh, like this most uh, despised organization. It's like, like kind of like, it makes it seem like S.H.I.E.L.D. is the most despised thing almost in the galaxy. It's kind of how he was phrasing it. It's like, well, wow. Like, I don't, I thought S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of never went anywhere beyond Earth. So does that mean things have happened in the future that made it so that S.H.I.E.L.D. went beyond Earth? Or, you know, like, what does that mean exactly? Or is that just because of Earth record? They, they're considered a whole, like, despised organization. I mean, is that because of, you know, everything that went down in season four, like, you know, that Fitz basically had to deal with in his episode? Is it that or is there more to it? Is it stuff that, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't gotten to yet? Is it something that's later on in their timeline? You know, that maybe that's something that they're going to have to fix when they try and, you know save the future, but also go back and try and change the past. I don't know. We'll kind of have to see. Because that is a question, though, like, how this whole situation goes about. I mean, it's like, how would how do you plan on going back home? Because once again, like, all their means of time travel have all been one-way tickets, especially Fitz. His is a super one-way ticket. And so was the rest of the team. So it's like, huh, not unless you find another monolith, but not unless there's something on Earth's surface. Because remember, like that's crawling with roaches, but we know that there are people down there. One set people is um, Deacon's dad. So 
I don't know, that was just kind of interesting tidbits of information I picked up. So I'm also very interested to find out who Kasaias' dad is in comparison with this whole Kree situation. Like, where do you, you know, stand in this grand hierarchy? Especially, like, if you hold a high enough position to be like... I, and I also appreciate this, too, because once again, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ties in. So I'm guessing that's going to tie into Guardians of the Galaxy in some shape or form. Because that's so far been the biggest, like, space aspect to the MCU, so I'm sure we're going to get ties to that in some shape or form. Like I said, another great episode. I'm super excited to see where uh, the next episode takes us with all of this going forward. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good day.